YouTube, what's going on today, man? So this one's going to be a little bit different. This is going to be a down and dirty how-to guide from finding your zones all the way to shooting your first animals on how to do a great one whitetail grind. Now, I will say you can use this practice for any great one or any grind that you set your mind to within this game. But our mod, Bob, he wants to get a great one whitetail as his first great one. And so we're helping him, teaching him everything that I know that I've learned from watching everyone on YouTube and everyone on Twitch that I'm friends with. So this right here is going to be the scoop way of how I do a great one grind. So hope you guys enjoy. Before we get into the video, don't think I'm not going to talk about this, right? 63% of you guys, big old 6-3, 63% of you are not subscribed. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, put the bell notification on, and you can see anytime we post a video. But now, enough of this. Let's get into it. All right, so Bob, have you already searched the like majority of the top part of the map? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna head south. It's 10:39. I'm gonna head south and start looking uh looking down there. Some uh, Koi. So we're doing something special today. We are um Bob, my mod. He wants to set up a great one grind. So we're gonna be doing like a kind of down and dirty how to set up from square one, from finding zones all the way to um tenting and stands and just all kinds of everything and how i do my herd management um how to stack how to how to do this that and the other it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be a good time so any of you guys both twitch and tiktok any of you guys if you are um wanting to set up a great one grind the first thing the absolute first thing that you have to do travel to all of your spots where whitetail can drink whitetail can drink um, this goes for any great one. It can be black bear, moose, um, red deer. Go find your drink zones. Find as many as you possibly can. A good starting point for me, whenever I'm doing a grind, depending on how many zones are, are there, there are per map, um, you need to find at least, whenever I did my whitetail, uh, I found 55 to 60, and that's when I started. So, we're gonna be going around looking for a lot of zones and stuff. Um, and uh, once we kind of figure out the the herd situation, how each uh, each zone looks, that's when we can start basically s setting up our tents, stands, and everything. Like here you go. Here's a here's a zone down here. That looks like a big boy in there as well. Um, I'm also so I'm gonna have to redo my hotspot map. So I'm gonna throw um, a hotspot map. This is for the video. I'm gonna throw my hotspot map on the screen, and. Um, and uh, that way you can, if you're wanting to do a great one grind on Rev and Thule, um, you're going to have a really good uh, really good map to look at. Because it'll be the most up-to-date um, one that I have. So I'm going to have to go back in, redo that, and uh, it'll be on the screen. It'll be in the video for you guys that are uh, watching on both these here. The main thing that you want to focus on buying first is tents. Okay, Cowboy, I'll, I'll, do, the, uh, I'll, do, the, I'll do the bow. But the, the absolute main thing that you need right off the... Well, you don't need it, right? You don't need it. Nice. But the main thing you want to focus on buying first are tents. The reason I say that is because you see how many different zones there are on how many different lakes there is. Once you can tent your zones that you want to shoot, then that's going to make your life infinitely easier. Instead of having to spawn in right here at this outpost, just run over here and shoot this zone right here. So if I can set up a tent right over here, boom, quick access. There you go. Oh, so the easiest easiest way that I found to look for drink uh, drink zones, especially at the end of their drink zone time, is to get on a four wheeler and drive around the lakes because their footprints are still going to be on the uh, on the ground even if they're not there. Um, so you'll still be able to pick up the uh, the prints and stuff. I was about to reset time. Uh, so typically they're I, I believe they stay on the ground for at least an hour after their drink zone time if not a little bit longer so i just get on the four wheeler and whip it around the lakes especially like the the big lakes that's an easy easy way to uh to find find your zones especially after drink zone time is um finished i'm down here ah yes sick this Don't lake feels too big to only have one zone on it no. um I don't, I think I only have, I think I have like two, but you gotta, you gotta remember though, um, the more that you shoot throughout the grind, the more, um, your zones are going to kind of bust up. 
Because you can only, yeah. you're going to start, um, oh, oh, that's a big boy. He's tall. But you're going to start, oh, that's another fucking big deer. It was up 211. Hell yeah. But you're going to start, um, you're grinding everything, and then, say you only have like 60 zones at the beginning. The more you shoot, the more those zones are going to break up and start branching off into, into smaller zones. So that's why every like 250 to 300 kills, I get into my grind. I go search all my zones that I don't primarily nice. hunt. Um, so if I've already shot them down um, to their ones and does, I still go search them just in case another zone spawned at like that lake or something. How's this map? Fishery's got uh, some pretty good zones. It's a lot different from mine. Um, so this is one thing nice. that y'all... Uh, Y'all can keep in mind as well. Not every map is going to be the same. Um, I know, like, it, it happens a lot on TikTok. Like, especially if, like, me or... Especially Zombie, because he's all the time getting his great ones and stuff. Everyone's like, what uh, what lake? What zone? Right? Not every map is going to be the same. So his, like, for instance, this lake right here that I'm on, I have... I think I have three zones on this lake. And only one of them is in the same spot. The other two are in completely different spots as to, uh, in relation to my lake. Oh, you have 269? Hell yeah. So, this is a zone that's going to break up. Um, it, maybe. I, I have a zone on my map still that, that's about the same size. But typically, um, these bigger zones, once you once you start shooting um, everything, it uh, it slowly starts to, uh, starts to break up. Um, so, if you're fucking shooting and uh, you see your zone getting less and less... That's, be, that's not because your deer are just disappearing. They're just moving to different zones. So that's why every, like, 250, 300, 400, whatever you want to set for your um, go out and check um, rate, then, uh, why is my, why aren't they going to work? Then that's where you'll really, you'll start to find those zones with the, uh, the deer and stuff in them. Can you explain the exterior zone? So, Jamo, your exterior zones are your zones that you don't intend to shoot. They're not in your main rotation area. Um, so, your exterior zones, you want them to be like your level ones and does. Um, by overloading your map, um, like 80% of your map with level ones and does, what that does is it kind of freaks the game out. And it's like, hey, this person's not having fun if they only have ones and does on their map. So, let's spawn in more twos, more threes, possibly a great one, you know? How many kills could the great one take? Uh, MP Clan, it can take as many kills as it takes. Uh, there's no definite answer to that. Um, my longest great one grind was 3,100 kills. And my shortest one to get him to spawn was 194. And my... Um, so I shot him and number four at the same time. Number four spawned about 1,600 kills after that. Um, and then my very first one took uh, a little over 1,200. 1,225. What do you shoot when you're rotating through the zone that you want to rotate uh, through then? So I shoot level twos. Um, I've ba I've almost gotten to the point where I'm comfortable with how my how many zones that I'm, I'm shooting um, to where if I want to take threes as they spawn, I will. Um, but right now I have some stacked on my map just so I can kind of refine my my setup and everything. And um, But you're only shooting two, two deer. Per zone, Bob. You hear me? Two deer per zone. That's what I've been doing. Okay. I was say you shoot two deer per zone because if you shoot more than that, then you're overshooting, and that causes your um, respawns to get a little hectic sometimes. Uh, if you shoot like three or four deer, it could cause one of your respawns not to come back to that certain lake. It'll get thrown to another zone. So it really comes into play, especially when you're doing your herd management. You've got it really refined and everything. Only shooting two because, no. like I said, if you shoot more, then that could throw a... Uh, level two or even a level three into one of your exterior zones and you wouldn't know it until you get to a certain point in your grind you go out and check up oh, yep see boom right there this is proof that even after drink zone time you can find drink zones boom has 10 deer in it too damn yeah so that is why this is one of my favorite methods of finding drink zones for any great one grind at the end of drinks on time, take your four-wheeler, drive around the lakes, check it out. Uh, do you know how many hours outside of the time will drinks on show up? Um, late Baker, is it? Yeah, Breaker, sorry. Um, I believe it's like up to an hour. Up to an hour, I think. Um, 
I could be wrong on that. It could be different. Um, but I've always, I always, my rule of thumb is to just go an hour after the, uh, after the drink zone ends nice. an hour, right around the four wheeler on a lake. And then you're good to go. Um, uh, Bob, I found two more. So do you want, and see, this is, this is like a case right here because Bob was here earlier at this lake and he was saying there's only one zone here and it's a link zone. Now there's two whitetail zones here that you didn't see earlier. I have two more tents and one more tripod. Two more tents and one more tripod. Okay, so um, you don't need tripods right off the rip. Um, yeah. It's helpful, but you don't need tripods right off the rip. Your main priority is going to be to get uh, tents. You can have 16 tents per map, um, and then that helps you a lot, especially going from zone to zone. Um, so, but you also want to try and use your tents and stands to your advantage. So, finding a spot that, ooh, I may be able to actually move that tent over here, possibly. But finding a spot that you can shoot multiple zones nice. from the same uh, tent stand combo is super helpful. So, like, anywhere that you see... Um, oh, shit. I removed that waypoint. I'll put it over here. So, like, I'm getting ready to go try and run over here. And if I can put a tent here and you would be able to see both zones, then that's, that's what you're wanting. But if not, you'll have to... Uh, you'll just kind of have to live with this one up here for now. So whenever it comes to placing your tents and stands for your tents, I try to have them about 300 out if possible. Um, just because I've noticed that with the spook distance changes, um, you can't put them as close as you used to be able to. So I try, I put them about 280, 290, 300 out. And then um, stands, I typically keep them about 220. 220 out is an easy shot, uh, especially if you zero to 164. Um, it's pretty much dead on at that uh, at that distance. 60 yards ain't going to really be that big of a deal. So, tents, uh, about 280 to 300. And then stands, roughly 220 or whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, try not to go closer than 220. I think the spook distance with the running is still the same. Because I have a tent on, uh, a stand on mine that is about 180 yards from the zone. And they, they'll go attentive, but they won't spook immediately. Um, and then if you want to make a zone, so in the top right lake, very top right, you see the zones are directly across from each other. At some point, if you wanted to make one of those zones invisible, you just put the stand, I believe it's within like 50 to 100, and it'll make that zone invisible. Um, that, that can become really good into play whenever, uh, like if you're shooting both zones on that lake. Then you could have one go invisible, and then the other one um, is open. And then as soon as you fast travel to the other side, then um, it'll be uh, that one that you spawned in that was invisible is no is available now. All right, uh, Bob. So the way that I like doing my uh, my time resets is I'll spawn away from the zone, um, or it's, I won't spawn. I won't change time in a tent. Um, I always do it at an outpost. Um, that way, uh, because for some reason, I don't know why, if you do it in the tent, sometimes they come, sometimes they won't. I don't know. Um, I always do the top left outpost and then kind of go from there. All right, yeah, so they, this is a zone that spawns in later. And that's going to be the tricky part. You're going to you're gonna find a lot of zones that don't like to spawn in immediately. Um, and uh, you're going to have to kind of play around with it and see when you want to start hitting your rotation. So me, 930 works best for me because at my first zones that I shoot, my deer are there. And then slowly as I progress through my uh, my rotation, uh, the deer uh, appear. All right. So herd management. All right. This is a, this is a hot topic in the, uh, the Call of the Wild community. So what it is, right? Um, it's been around the game for a while. Um, Jax used to do it whenever he, uh, didn't stream for EW. He kind of got into it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> iBuy was the one that really perfected it and figured out how to use it when, um, 
grinding for great ones. So, what it is, is you go out, you find your zones. Find as many as you possibly can. So, Bob's sitting around 53, 54, 55. That's a pretty comfortable spot to start your great one grind. Pazudo, appreciate the gifted sub to Cheyenne. Thank you, buddy. But, what you're going to be doing, right? So, we're going to go throughout here. Bob's going to set up as many tents as possible. You can have 16 tents per map. 16 tents per map. Um, and basically, he's going to take about 10 of those, right? 10 of those and set them on zones that he wants to primarily hunt. So that's going to be your interior zone. This is this is like the I buy method. And it's going to be your interior zones. Your interior zone is going to be your main rotation. Your exterior zone, so those extra six tents that you can place on your map, is going to be at zones that you don't want to hunt, right? So, for instance, if this is a zone that Bob wants to hunt, He'll set a tent here because this is gonna be my, this is my tent, so it's gonna go with me whenever I, I leave the map. So he's gonna set a tent here. He can either build this stand right here if he wants, which actually wouldn't be a bad idea. That's one less stand that you gotta buy. Um, he'll set uh, set his stand here, um, and then he's gonna shoot two, two deer per zone. Doesn't matter if there's twenty deer in that zone. You're only taking two. All right. And you're only going to be shooting your twos. Leave your ones and your does alone. Right? Leave your ones and your does alone. If you shoot a doe, it doesn't turn into a male. And if you shoot a one, yes, it could possibly get bigger. But you want to try and overload your map with ones and does in the zones that you don't want to hunt. The reason that is, is because basically your game files, it has an animal population. Animal population is going to be overfilled with ones and does. So what that has the, gut, the game thinking is, hey, this person has a lot of small animals on their map. They're not enjoying the game. So what they're going to do is they're going to spawn in more twos, more threes, possibly even a great one. Who knows? The reason I say only shoot two per zone, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. <clears throat> only shoot two. Is because if you shoot um, more than two, what that does is that you're starting to overshoot, over, over, underfill your zones and stuff. Um, so by only shooting two, um, you're shooting just the perfect amount. If you shoot three or four, five, however many, um, then you're either one. If you're not in a stand, you're gonna blow out your zone. If you shoot, uh, if you shoot more than three, um, and then if you shoot three out of a zone. Um, it could possibly throw a respawn into a different zone like that you're not wanting to shoot. So if you're on your main rotation, shoot three, you could possibly end up kicking a, a two or even a three over to an no. exterior zone that you're not intending on hunting. And the cool thing, right, with herd management, you can apply this to any of your great one grinds. Or you can apply it to any grind in general, right? So I'm using herd management on my super rare uh, Rocky Mountain Elk grind. You can apply it to any great one. Uh, any great one grind, it works. Um, you can apply it to any, so if you want to randomly do a grind on geese, I had no geese wouldn't really work. Um, do one on like blacktail. You can do it. Um, he's traveling. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. Oh, Bob said fuck it and sent it. Oh, nobody. Oh, nobody. Oh, nobody. I don't even think you hit him. Oh, you did. You hit him. Probably bots that one. That's fine. There will be more. Fuck it! There'll be more, Bob says. Let's go. Scoop, look up. What? Look up. If you want to stack things so stacking if you don't know what stacking is stacking is where you have a max score animal so for instance that level three that uh that bob just got screwed out of um that level three we could have left him in that zone and then um and then left him there stacked him right so the, stacking all it is is just leaving the 
um, largest uh, estimate or largest um, level on the map. Right, then you stack them in your zones. That way, um, you get more, and then it, it slowly. The more that you get on the map, the, the quicker it turns your um, your exterior zones into those ones and does. Because the more threes that you have on your map, the more ones is going to try to repopulate. Because if you have too many, uh, the game for some reason thinks that's a bad thing. Whereas if you have a lot of ones, they're going to spawn in more. Does that kind of make sense? But if you stack. Um, you can stack for as long as you want. doesn't matter. Um, there's no set number. Like, hey, once you hit this many level threes on your map, you shoot them. You shoot them whenever the fuck you want to. Um, you can do that with any grind. Me, I had it, or I did it on, um, or started to do it on Moose. I didn't feel like stacking them anymore because the grind is super slow for Moose. Um, at least for me, it is. Uh, my respawns are kind of screwed. I don't know why. But um, with Whitetail, I still am stacking to this day. Um, just because my respawns and I'm trying to fine-tune my herd management. So, um, there's that. So, I'm trying to fine-tune it. So, I'm stacking. Um, I think I have three on the map. Once I get um, to a solid point to where I feel comfortable with how the herd management is in my zones... I'm going to shoot them all, and then as I see level 3s pop up on the map, I'm going to shoot them. Yeah, if you want to stack, stack. If you don't, don't. Um, just in order to get a great one, you don't have to herd manage. You don't have to stack. You don't have to do any any of that. Um, it's just a fun little extra thing to do throughout your grind. Jace, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to. So you don't have to have tents and stands to do your great one grind. It makes it significantly easier for you. But you do not have to have them. It's not a necessity. Um, if you're going to start implementing tents and stands into your grinds and stuff, then the first thing you need to preface on is tents. Tents, tents, tents. Right? So with all these awesome zones that Bob has, if he were to try and go to every single zone that he wants to shoot, it would take him probably six or seven different um, time resets just to shoot yep. the zones. Whereas with tents and stuff, you can easily spawn back in here. You got three three zones right here. You can probably set another tent up in here, put a stand right in here. I know this area right here is really, really wooded, but you can put a stand like over somewhere and you can shoot these three zones as well. It's uh, Tents is a vital, vital spot or a vital thing to a great one grind once you get that money. As you go out, you get more money, just start buying tents. Buy intense, buy intense. Yeah, so the, the the thing is, right, with your your great one grinds, um, if you're doing the herd management technique, so as soon as you get a zone shot down to ones and does, or at a comfortable level where you feel like you can, you're going to pull that tent and stand, and you're going to move it to a different zone. And you're going to continuously, so your 10 zones uh, for your interior zones are going to be the ones that you continuously shoot. You're not moving unless for whatever reason you shoot it down, um, then just take it and move on um, to a different zone. Don't, uh, unless you have my luck, I don't know how this happened, but I uh, I went through in one of my main zones whenever I got great one number three, and I was shooting some ones out of that zone, and then my great one spawned from level ones. I don't know how, but, I mean, I do know how. It's all RNG, but, um, yeah, it's, crazy so as soon as you shoot your zone down to ones and does move it to your next zone that you don't want to shoot as your primary and then just start doing the same thing with that